100% pure rock. 107.7 The Bone. 1077 The Bone. That is Dio, the late, great Ronnie James with the last in line. I'm Nikki Black, and I don't know anybody that has ever had a bad word to say about Ronnie James Dio. In the studio with me, a guy I could say the same about, Mr. Paul Bostaff. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, I think that uh, I should just get right out of the way. The question everybody wants to know, how are you feeling? I feel fantastic. <laughs> What is the quote-unquote serious injury that everybody keeps hearing about? Because it sounds so ominous, but you look fine. Uh, in March, uh, I was at my I have a rehearsal studio of my own, um, and I was uh, I finished rehearsing, and there was some equipment stacked around my drum set that uh, when I rehearse, sometimes I keep the studio a little dark, and uh, I didn't see mood the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, which is always good, except for when you can't see what you're uh, walking around. And I tripped over some stuff on the floor, fell. Subsequently, a couple hours later, I had a, a lump on my wrist. I wasn't sure what it was, and I went into physical therapy, and um, it, the lump had caused tendonitis, so it kept me off the drum set for a while. And um, I just have had the lump removed, um, I think uh, now it's been three weeks. And what it turned out to be was I was born with an, what they call an extensory muscle that was attached to my index finger on my right hand, which is an extra muscle. So and the extra hand muscle could be why you were such a rad drummer. I didn't think I was a rad drummer, <laughs> but whatever. But um, no, they, uh, they, 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 re they removed the muscle, the tendonitis is gone now, I'm just mm -hmm. recovering from the surgery, and as soon as I do that, then I'll be back behind the kid again. So it seemed like it took a long time between March and, uh, I guess that would be July, before you had surgery, but really it just seemed like it took a long time because Testament was in the process of recording the album, and then there were a couple of Mayhem dates and some South American tour dates that you missed, so everybody was just kind of up in arms while you were just dealing with your arms. No pun intended, right? Um, <laughs> but um, um Well, you know, it, yeah, it, it actually did seem like a long time, but not only because of Testament schedule. I'm, I'm really not the kind of person that likes to sit around and do nothing. And because of the wrist injury, um, that's literally what I was doing. I mean, other, other than running because my feet work. Um, so um, I'm used to playing drums all the time. Um, you know, you don't really know how much you use your hands until you can't, you know. So, um, it, you, know, you know, I couldn't even twiddle my thumbs. Now, how are you feeling now after you've had the surgery? Has the doctor given you an indication of, of where you can go from here? Uh, as soon as I'm ready to play. Uh, soon, basically, the tendonitis problem's gone. That was uh, a result of the uh, mini-me that was in my wrist. Um, but the, um, uh, the tendonitis that was caused from that's gone. But now the, um, they had to cut, they had to make an incision in my wrist. And because of that, anytime you, you get an incision, scar tissue develops after the surgery. So the scar tissue is around all my tendons now, and that has to be broken up through, through, through physical therapy, which is now happening. And I'm getting my, my range of motion back, and after I get my range of motion back, then I get my strength back. And as soon as, you know, I get the confidence to start, like, you know, um, uh, playing behind the kit, which is all repetitive motion. Right. And when you've got scar tissue surrounding tendons, and it's, it's, it's really tight, and you, you try to push it, and uh, you, you know, start doing any kind of repetitive motion um, exercise, which would be drumming, you could make whatever you were trying to fix like worse or permanent. So you're gonna have to take a couple extra months now in order to be able to play drums in perpetuity? Pretty much. I last time I saw my doctor, the doctor said, pick up the sticks whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I feel healthy enough, um, and I'm confident that um, my wrist feels good, then I'll start picking up sticks again and, you know, uh, start playing. I mean, I don't, I'm a very physical player, so there's only one way I know how to play, and if I can't do that, then um, that's just not playing drums to me. In the studio with me is Paul Bostaff, drummer for Testament. Can I say that? You can. It still you is. did. <laughs> I did. <Yep. laughs> am I correct you or are, am I a liar? You are correct. Okay, excellent. Because, uh, you know, there's been a couple of press releases, so we know that uh, Gene Hoagland did the album. That's right, yeah. Which is kind of ironic since Gene Hoagland did the Forbidden Reunion album, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then uh, now he's doing the Testament Reunion album. It's like, finally, an excellent drummer is stepping into your kit for a change. Instead of you stepping into another drummer's kit. And you know what? It, 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 I, I lose track. Metal's so incestuous. It you really know, is. I mean, it's, it, you know, Gene's a god behind the drum set. So 
You know, the only thing the only thing that I think about when I heard that Gene was doing the New Testament record, I was like, oh God, I got to learn that dude's parts. Because <laughs> he's, he, I mean, like, like Gene is like, you know, would that, would, if there's a benchmark for metal drumming, I think you know Gene and Lombardo, those two guys like set it, for me. And you know what's funny is I heard that Gene said the same thing about playing with Forbidden. What What do you say? He said, "Oh man, I got to learn all the Bo Staff stuff." I heard he didn't even warm up for the show. <laughs> Gene? Yeah. Not for my stuff. He doesn't have to warm up for my stuff. Have you seen that guy play? Well, yeah, I've seen him. He plays with weights. He puts ankle weights on. I know. That seems bizarre to me. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a drummer. Is that that bizarre in the drumming world? Do lots of drummers should do that? Uh, No. (laughs) Actually, actually, Gene, I I believe Gene's the only guy who does it. And by the way, he plays with ankle weights and combat boots on. Were you around um, at all for Testament's new album? Uh, No, not at all. Isn't that kind of awkward as Testament's drummer? Yes, it was. It was very strange. Um, you know, I, I went th- I've been going through a lot this entire this entire year has been very been very interesting. Not only did I have the wrist injury, um, I went through a divorce this year as well. So the divorce came first, and then the wrist injury happened, and it was like, okay, what next? You know. So um, at least your dog is okay. My dog is okay. That's good. My pickup truck still runs. <laughs> so if those two things would have happened, I would not be playing metal. I'd start playing country music and <laughs> probably be rich, okay? But um, uh, I, I, I was really kind of disconnected from creativity this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the physical injury really kind of threw me back. I didn't know what was wrong. Didn't know if I would be playing drums anymore. And the band had to forge ahead. And I, they had my 100% understanding and blessing to do that. You know, that was and funny. to their credit, I mean, they've they've spun uh, what is going to be three drummers now in the last uh, four months, you know, while you were out, because we had uh, Gene Hoagland to come in and do a couple... Sh- no, wait, Gene didn't do any shows. He did the he just did the record, and then John Allen did the shows, yeah. and now we've got John Tempesta stepping behind the kit for you on the Anthrax tour, right? That's right, yep. And it's kind of awesome, because everybody is friends, right? I mean, you and John go back, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, it was funny. that Here's an interesting story about me and John. When John was in Exodus, um, I had we toured with Exodus. Uh, that was, uh, uh, I think, the Fabulous Disaster record. Um, and I had a broken right hand. Um, so we did, that, we did that tour in the United States with them, and I had, to keep, I had to keep my hand in a brace. I couldn't play with my right hand. So me and John became friends during that tour, and um, uh, the, the hand thing's got nothing to do with anything, but I just... I you know, just mentioned it, but anyway, make a long story short. Um, when I when I quit Forbidden, um, the night I came home um, from from practice or our meeting, um, there was a message. Uh, we had you know like everybody had a message board next to their phone. There was mm-hmm. a message board. There was a message um, on my phone. Uh, John Tempesta called. Please call him back. Well, two days later, well, daily the next day, I get a phone call because Slayer's manager had called my house, not my cell phone, called my house. And um, apparently Tempesta was calling me to let me know that Slayer was looking for a drummer and giving me a heads up. Um, I didn't know that. I talked to John right after I got the phone call talking to Slayer's manager. I called John. I figured, well, I should call Tempesta because this is probably somehow interconnected. So um, anyway, that's just my John Tempesta story. But John, I love John. John's an excellent guy. 